Hello everybody, Mobius1 here bringing you another Star Wars Galaxies emulator video. Uh, today, I'm actually, I don't know if I want to say updating or recreating, but enhancing, maybe, <laughs> skill enhancing my video on skill enhancement uh, attachments, or SEAs, or Cs as some people will call them. Um, I did a video on this, I forget which episode number it is. It was a couple months ago where I talked about clothing and armor attachments and how they worked in the game. Unfortunately, I learned after I posted that video that there are a couple really important pieces of information that I left out on how skill attachments actually work in the game. So I've been meaning to update this for a while and finally here it is. So we're going to spend a lot of this episode uh, looking at UI menus. So, I have this set up. I went out and did some shopping, picked up some clothing attachments that we're going to use, and some socketed clothing. So, I'm going to try and go over as much of the information that I went over in my last video, and this one as well, which kind of makes my last one obsolete. So, if you have watched that one, uh, well, first of all, thank you for watching it, but second of all, I'm sorry, you're probably going to hear a lot of information repeated first. Uh, but stick around, because you may learn something new that I left out. Alright, so first of all, you may or may not have noticed that certain clothing and armor in the game, when you click on them to examine them, uh, will have something listed here called Sockets Available. Now, clothing and armor in Star Wars Galaxies can have anywhere from zero to four sockets. Uh, and it is randomly generated uh, when that piece of uh, gear is crafted. As far as I know, the crafter has no control over the number of sockets. I believe it is completely randomly generated, and if I'm wrong on that, somebody please comment and let me know, but I don't believe it has anything to do with the, the person's skill level or the resources used. It is completely random. So here we have uh, four socketed gloves, which I'm going to be using for this uh, video. So I'm going to equip these. So these have absolutely no stats on them at so, uh, whatsoever. Um, however, they do have four sockets. So these things called clothing attachments, you can loot these from any NPC, uh, humanoid NPC in the game. Uh, you can also get them from locked containers and, and, and certain like things like that, I believe, also. Uh, but they are... the stats on them are completely randomized, anywhere from one... actually, some of them, I think, can be negative, uh, but we'll get into that a little later. Uh, but the, the maximum value on them is... 25 because the most uh, stat gain that you can receive for any one skill mod through your clothing is plus 25. So if I open up my skill sheet on your left hand side here is this this window third window down says my skill mods you can actually see a list of all of your different skill mods uh, based on your skills like what skill boxes you have as well as your clothing and armor or whatever you're wearing so you can see this little slash here uh, means that my melee defense through my skills is plus 62. However, when you take into account the skill mods on the armor I'm wearing, it's actually a plus 71. So I think that it's most important, uh, it's very important for just about anybody, but uh, like for doctors, if you plan on uh, being a buffer, like you really, in order to get the most out of your buff packs as a doctor, you need to have a plus 25 wound treatment uh, attachment. So some sort of, you can see, if I click on my shirt here, my shirt, which was uh, bioengineered by Corvain, actually gives me a plus 25 injury treatment and plus 25 wound treatment. So that's where this plus 100 slash plus 125 comes from. And even if I were to get, like, say, a pair of gloves that have an additional plus 25 wound treatment on them, it would not stack up to 150. Uh, 25 is, again, the most you can get from clothing. However, uh, I, I emphasize the word clothing there because they do make... Uh, there are other ways to buff those stats. So, for example, uh, there's this food, Bavoli Tempari which gives you uh, an additional bonus to wound treatment, and this does stack. So doctors can further increase the strength of their buffs by consuming Bavoli in addition to the plus 25 from the clothing. But that plus 25 is both clothing and armor. You cannot gain more than 25 points. 
So, now that we have that out of the way, um, it is very simple to attach a an attachment. Uh, first of all, I have all clothing attachments that can only go on clothing, and armor attachments can only go on armor, but we're going to be dealing simply with clothing attachments today, though they, wor they work exactly the same, so you're not going to be missing out on anything. Alright, so I have a four-socketed pair of gloves here with absolutely no attachments on them already. I want to apply this clothing attachment, which has a skill mod of Group Terrain Negotiation 2. Uh, group Terrain Negotiation is actually, I believe, a skill or a squad leader skill. Uh, squad leaders can actually enhance the stats of their entire group. So it really isn't a benefit to me, but I just kind of picked random clothing attachments that will let me demonstrate different things for this video. So I'm not really worried about what the actual skill mod is, uh, more just teaching you guys the concepts. Alright, so first things first, we want to apply that. All we're going to do is we're going to click and drag and drop it on the gloves. Boom! Just like that, you see it disappeared from my inventory here. It is now on these gloves, but wait, why doesn't it say that on here? Uh, if you click off of them and then click back on them, there we go. We can see sockets available drop down to three instead of four. And now skill mods group terrain negotiation two is listed there. So these gloves now give me a buff of group terrain negotiation two. We can further verify this by opening up our skill window, scrolling down to G uh, in my skill mods and you can see group terrain negotiation is plus zero because I have no skills that give me group terrain negotiation slash plus two from my clothing attachment so it's it's there that benefit is being applied as a matter of fact if I unequip these gloves you can see that that uh, actually disappears completely from my skill mods list A B C D E F G H I would be listed right underneath fire resistance and it's not if I put it back on, F, G, there it is, it's back. Okay, now, awesome, that was easy. Check this out, I have another clothing attachment with Group Terrain Negotiation 3. So, perfect, that's, I want to stack these, and I have three additional sockets available on my gloves. So you would think that I could click and drag and place this clothing attachment on those gloves that would consume a socket so my sockets available would go down to two and that my skill mods group terrain negotiation would go up to five correct unfortunately that is not correct uh, the way this works is you can only have one skill tape applying the buff to any one skill mod so if I were to apply this clothing attachment to these gloves, let's see what happens. Boop. Okay, we'll refresh them. Look at that. Okay, sockets available is two. So it did subtract a socket from my gloves. However, under the skill mods, group terrain negotiation is only three because the highest skill, t uh, skill mod on the two tapes that we put on it was the plus three. That's, that plus two that we had on there originally is still technically attached, right? Because I only have I only have two available sockets instead of three. So that plus two is still on there, but it was overwritten by the plus three, and it is lost. Uh, on that note, it is not possible to remove clothing or armor attachments once you put them on. They are permanently attached to that piece of gear. Uh, the good thing about that, though, or the thing that it doesn't make it that much of a problem, especially for clothing, is that even when your clothing's condition gets down to 0%, you'll still receive the uh, stat mods from any clothing attachments. That's not the same, uh, not true for armor. So once your armor uh, condition goes, uh, I'm sorry, it's not the same for the protection on armor. So once your armor protection gets down to 0%, you will no longer receive the protection from the armor. However, you will still receive the uh, stat from the skill mods. Um, but obviously, if you're not getting any protection from the armor, you're probably going to want to replace that. Thus, you will lose the skill mod because you can't remove it from the armor. Okay, so, so cool. So now we have the plus three terrain negotiation. Let's verify that in our skill mod list. Group terrain negotiation plus three. Indeed it did. <sighs> Alright, so what else do we got? We have a couple different things. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, we're going to use a new set of gloves. 
Um, and we're going to talk about... No, you know, we'll, we'll just stick with these ones for now because I'm, I'm not sure how many things I'm going to use up here. Uh, let's talk about skill tapes with multiple skill mods on them. So you can see here I have one clothing attachment that has a structure complexity 8 and a creature taming bonus 9 on it. Now, you would think, again, that if I apply this tape, I'm going to get both of these bonuses. Unfortunately, that's not true either. The way it works when you have multiple skill mods on one tape is the highest bonus gets applied as long as there is not already a higher bonus of that skill mod. All right, so basically, if I apply this clothing attachment to these gloves, since there is not already a skill mod for creature taming bonus on here that is higher than 9, then creature taming bonus 9 is the skill mod that's going to be applied to these gloves, and the structure complexity 8 is going to be lost. Now we can verify this by once again looking at our list. Let's see, structure complexity, since I'm not an architect, I don't have a structure complexity skill mod. All right, same thing, creature taming bonus nine. Since I am not a creature handler, I don't have a creature taming bonus. So both of these for me are zero right now, and that's what we're gonna use to verify this. If I click and drag this onto these gloves, refresh, you can see sockets available went down to one, and look, creature taming bonus nine was the only skill mod that was applied. That structure uh, complexity or whatever it was, eight was lost. All right, and again, if I look, there's my, uh, wait, why is creature taming about it? Oh, I guess this is one of those, probably, is this one of the skill mods that don't actually work? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Well, I guess this is a good time as I need to bring up the fact that there are some skill mods that uh, are actually broken in the game. Um, maybe not necessarily broken, but are disabled by design. I'm not sure if this is one, since I'm not looking at the list right now, but I will put in the description of the video a link to a page that has all of the skill mods in the game listed with little notes on which ones are working, which ones aren't working, and and so on. So I think that might be the case here, because it, it would just show up in this list, and it's not. But anyway... Uh, what's important to know is that that one skill mod was lost. Uh, now again, like I said, if I wanted to get that structure uh, complexity, I think it was, right? Because I have, yeah, I have, I have another one in here. If I wanted to get that structure complexity 8 to be applied on here, what I would have had to do first is find another skill tape with creature taming bonus 10 or higher Actually, I guess it could be 9 or higher, right? Because there was a 9 already on there. But just to be safe, I would get one with 10 or higher and put that on the gloves first. Then what happens is when I when you go to put the skill mod with the two mods on it, the game actually looks and says, okay, what, what skill mod is higher on this tape? Okay, creature taming bonus 9 was the higher of the two. However, when it goes to apply, it says, oh, wait, there's already a creature taming bonus 10 on that piece of clothing already. So that creature taming bonus 9 wouldn't do anything, right? Because it, you, the highest takes priority. So it would then go down to the structure complexity 8 and it would apply that mod instead. Now luckily I have a structure complexity 9 skill, skill tape, so if I want to just throw that on there to consume that last socket, boom, there we go. We have no more available sockets. But now we have Structure Complexity 9 and Creature Taming Bonus 9 on the same pair of gloves. So that is how that works. We've consumed four sockets and only got three out of the possible one, two, three, four, five different skill mods, including the two group train negotiations uh, that, we, that you would logically assume would be on those gloves. So it's important, this is what I totally left out of my last video, and that's why I'm do, doing this over again, because it's really important and could be really confusing to somebody that didn't know that's how they worked. So let's move on to the next pair of gloves, which we're going to be putting this tape on. This tape actually has three different still skill uh, things on it. So again, uh, defense versus posture change up, three. One-handed melee damage, five. And counter attack, three. 
Now, based on what we just learned, one-handed melee uh, damage, five, since that's the highest, that should be what's applied to this. Now, I, I guess I wanted to buy a uh, one-handed melee damage with a higher, higher value than five here, but I guess I, I kind of messed that up. That's okay. Let's, uh, we'll put this one on first anyway. Defense versus posture change up. 12. And now when we go to apply this, we should get the one-handed melee damage. Yes, one-handed melee damage 5. Okay, so that's how that works. The very last one is actually one that I don't know what's going to happen because I've talked to a couple people uh, in game before I started recording this and no one seems to know what's going to happen here. I can tell you what I think is going to happen, but basically let's look at what we have. We have a clothing attachment here. It has two skill mods and both of them are the same value. We have defense versus dizzy 5 and defense versus knockdown 5. Um, I think what's going to happen is the first one that's listed there is the one that's going to get applied. So I think Defense versus Dizzy 5 is going to get applied. So let's find out. Drum roll, please. Survey says... What? Defense versus Knockdown, got it. Okay, so maybe it's, it's the last one that's applied? The last one in the list? Maybe it's chosen at random. I I honestly don't know. So please, somebody on somebody comment on this video uh, if you know exactly how that's determined, because I've heard all different things about how how that is determined, and I I don't have the funds or the time to buy a bunch of skill tapes that are all multiple uh, skill mods with the same value uh, and and test it out myself. So please let me know what uh, what the deal is with that but that's all uh, the only thing I want to additionally put into this video are the total number of skill tapes that you can have whether you're wearing a full suit of armor or a mini suit now I kind of compared these in my full full armor versus mini suit episode but uh, Let's, let's look at it anyway. I'm going to break it down for you just by looking at my character here. So, since I wear a full suit of armor, uh, minus the gloves right now, but we can assume that those are armor gloves. You have one, the helmet is one, chest is two, legs are three, boots are four, arm pieces are five, six, seven, eight, and then gloves are nine. So there are nine pieces of armor that you can wear. Um, then, you do have a belt though the belt could be either a belt, which would be clothing, or a personal shield generator, which is... I guess it's just a shield generator. It's not technically armor, and I don't believe you can have sockets on them. So if you're wearing full suit of armor, we're going to assume you're going with the shield generator also. Uh, no, let's... for maximum maximum number, let's go with the clothing. So let's assume you're wearing the belt. Um, you can also be wearing a shirt underneath your chest plate, but that's going to be clothing. Uh, and you cannot put clothing attachments on backpacks, but you can on bandoliers? Yes. Okay, so the bandolier would take place of your backpack, and I think that would go over your, your chest. <sighs> I, I hope I'm right on this. I should have tested that before I started recording, but I, I believe that's right. I believe you could be wearing the uh, composite chest piece with the bandolier over top, and because I, I believe that takes up your backpack slot. So, you have nine pieces of armor, the belt and the bandolier, which are clothing. So, nine times four is 36. So, assuming you're wearing a full suit of armor, you can have 36 armor attachments and eight clothing attachments uh, because of the belt and the bandolier. So, full suit of armor permits you to have a total of 44 clothing, or 44 skill attachments. Uh, now, assuming you're going with the mini suit, the mini suit, you're going to have the helmet. Just for the armor, you're going to have the helmet, the chest, the boots, and one arm piece of armor. So, 4 times 4 is 16. So, 16 armor attachments. Then, for your clothing, you're going to have the belt still, the bandolier still, 
you're going to have the shirt still. Oh, I was I wrong. I was wrong about the first one. I forgot about the shirt. So it's plus four uh, with the shirt. So it's actually what was that 48, 48 attachments uh, for the full or for the full suit. So let's go. I'm sorry, I got lost off track because I forgot about the shirt. So for the mini suit, it's one. It's four armor pieces. So 16 armor attachments, and then um, shirt, belt, bandolier gloves and pants for clothing so that is 5 times 4 is 20 so 16 plus 20 is only 36 armor attach or uh, skill attachments for the mini suit so there is one other benefit to the full armor suit uh, uh, you basically get more sockets for clothing and armor attachments uh, wearing a full suit than you do for wearing a mini suit but I think most people agree that the lower encumbrance of the mini suit outweighs the uh, the additional sockets that you get from the full suit but it's personal preference honestly both are both are decent ways to go uh, maybe not for PvP but definitely for PvE so I hope this clears up some things definitely check out the link uh, in the description for a list of all the different attachments that work uh, because you definitely don't want to spend millions of credits on attachments like medicine use to find out that they don't work anymore all right so mobius one here thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time